Hi, my name is Mark Gingrass. Today I'm going to talk to you about what a target state diagram is and why it's useful for not only developers but program managers, system architects, business analysts. If you know what a target state diagram is and you at least know how to read various parts of it, it's going to be beneficial for everybody on the team. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through what a target state diagram is, the various zones like the client zone, application zone, web zone, and the reasons why you need firewall requests and where all that information resides on the TSD document itself. I'm not gonna get very granular here. I'm gonna be at a very high level, but just knowing where to find the TSD, doing a search for it within your organization or your team will help everybody out. There's gonna be questions about the TSD and even if you're not building it from scratch, you have to understand the reasons why it's important and you have to understand how to get the information like IP addresses or server names from the TSD. I'll try to add some animations and highlight the key areas as I go through the video, so enjoy. Welcome, my name is Mark Gingrass and I am going to talk to you about target state diagrams. Uh, a TSD, a target state diagram, it'll help us visualize the ideal future state of our system. It's gonna make it easy to plan, develop, and communicate the complex architecture. Now you have to communicate architectures to various stakeholders. So this is a way to formalize the communication between systems, between architectures, between applications. As you can see in this diagram, we have multiple swim lanes and these are called zones. At the very top, we have the client workstation, the web zone, then the application zone, the data zone, and other information. Now these zones can change, but this is typical for most organizations. Starting from the top, we have the client workstation. This is where the client actually uses their own computer and it logs into some web browser or whatever method they use to access your application. And now they're gonna go through that application and actually not talk directly to it, they're gonna go through the web zone, the F5 load balancer in this case. Now the web zone can have and contain multiple other entities. But in this case, we have a, a load balancer to typically you would distribute the load if there was say millions of hits, it would distribute it you know, across multiple servers versus just using one and bogging it down. Anyways, that's what the web zone is. And you can see that there's a line that's going from the web browser on the client workstation to the web zone. Now, if you're in a different zone, you might have to ask for what they call a firewall rule. This rule is, hey, give me permission to access this particular part of the zone. In this case, the F5 load balancer. As you can see in the communications and dependencies legend on the left-hand side, the client workstation has a little narrative that says, client workstation to F5 load balancer, and then it gives the protocol, the HTTPS and the port. And it's saying, hey, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna communicate from a browser to this load balancer via that communication port. In order to get that communication port opened up and allowable, we might have to do a change request and get this approved through our change request system. Going from the web zone to the application zone, this is where the application that we're usually customizing would uh, reside, in the application zone. And sometimes you can also call the data zone part of the application if it is. Sometimes the data zone has external data or internal data. So you'll see in this particular TSD, there's a red box around the application that is dotted. We have a production application web server and it's got a host name and it's got the IP address. So those are the details that are in every entity inside of this TSD. And then we usually have a description of what kind of software is being running on it. In this case, Postgres SQL and Tomcat and Node.js. And then of course on the very bottom we have the yellow application server with the actual operating system name, how many cores are in the CPU, what kind of RAM we're using, and disk, disk space. That's typical for each entity inside of a TSD. And if we keep going down further to the data zone, I will show you that the application is connected to a production server database. In this case, it's named abcdefghixyz.com with an IP address. And it also explains the software that's on it and the version numbers, which is important. So in this case, Oracle, Apex, and the uh, Tomcat SSL listener. And again, it's got the specs on that server as well. It's got the CentOS version 7 with eight CPUs and the storage space and the RAM. 
from the databases themselves, we have a developer workstation and an external data source. Now, these are not part of the actual application, but they are connected. So again, number four here, you'll see, and I didn't go through all of these and I don't plan to, but it's data transmitted from the developer's workstation to Oracle database server. And that also would be a firewall wall rule typically, even though it is still in the data zone and we're not crossing zones, but we're also crossing from application to a developer workstation. You can consider the developer workstation possibly an external entity as well. And in that case, you would be crossing zones. To finalize, the workstation also connects to an external dependency. I will scroll over and show you that it connects to, in the application zone, the SVN server, which we don't typically use in our organization. We might use Git instead. But no, nonetheless, it's telling me that the developer grabs information, which is code, from the SVN server, and it's going to make its way back to the developer workstation. The, the developer workstation will push code to the database server. And then, of course, the database server is serving the application, which is above that, and the application is going to display or run analyses or allow users to inter interface with the data. And at the end of the day, the application pushes the data back into the browser via number one, and the load balancer helps do that. 